So this is the Jyn Erso Blaster from Star Wars Rogue One. It makes noises and lights up. Let's turn it into something exceptional. There we go. Okay, so for some reason this attaches more to this side of the shell than the other, but then inside we have our voice box, our LED strip, our glow technology, which is up here and down here. I really like how this is done. I like it a lot. Then we have, you guessed it, uh, strife internals, but a different style of strife internals. I really dig how these are coming together. I think this is going to be really easy if we want to scrap the electronics and much trickier if we want to preserve the electronics so wow that's crazy for a shell so thin that's a insanely long screw so luckily we have tons of resistors to play with and hopefully we can find out a way to protect this circuit from the 2s lipo that we eventually want to install up yay uh let's do it Well guys, these motors are destroyed and there's a reason for that. See all of this? This is solvent weld that was used to hold these into the flywheel cage itself. I am furious. Like, this is just, it's ridiculous. Like, this would be, I mean, forget modding. Like, obviously modding is bad and we shouldn't do it, but um, this is an impossible toy to fix now. This is the first failure point of the toy other than like safeties and whatnot. And now you can't fix it at home. Like, 10 years from now, hobbyists, like, that were just Star Wars and... Uh, Glued-in motor cages. Took me about 10 minutes to bust that one out, and I am not looking forward to breaking this one out, too. But I'll tell you how I've been doing it. I've been doing it by creating an old-school uh, Nerf chisel of sorts out of a screwdriver. This is how we used to knock ARs out back in the day, by the way. And then I pop that and it's tapping it out and then the trick there is that this will only go so far before you destroy the uh, the cage so what you have to do is come up now that I figured out the method this is going way faster so hopefully it doesn't bother you guys as much as it bothered me and then you have to find a decent place to tap and try and bust it out the other side this way but uh, be be really careful doing this guys it would be really easy to cut yourself on the edge of this motor uh, I don't know housing or what have you or just like inadvertently hit the wrong way and just crush yourself so uh, be careful it's a huge pain that we have to do this motors used to come out much easier guys there we go all right so hopefully I can clean this up with a Dremel and slip some new motors in here what a pain.
Okay, so at this point, the bottom line is that the motor cage is totally ready, and all of the LEDs have resistors wired up to them. I calculated the resistance, and I got something that works, so these are all in parallel, of course, and then each one of these has a resistor, and then, yeah, there's one here on the cathode, and then here on the cathode, and then the switch I'm going to try and preserve, but the problem is that everything is really far apart, so as opposed to a strife where everything's kind of here and then connects to the battery tray directly up, the battery tray here is all the way forward, so we need really long wires to connect through, and we don't want anything to uh, short in the circuit, so I've got to get um, heat shrink and my actual heat gun and make sure that everything is going to be ready to kind of channel all the way through together. So I haven't locked anything down yet because that's kind of frustrating, but I did wire up the switch. I'm going to start carving out its space here, but we're getting very, very close to it being done. Let's uh, time lapse through that now. Alrighty guys, so you better believe that there is a lot of love in this blaster because this circuitry was a nightmare. This giant bundled up nonsense covered in owl duct tape and heat shrink is essentially just three or four parallel circuits with the uh, power line isolated to the motors and then the LEDs drawing off of them. But how that works is when the trigger depresses this switch over here, it tells all the lights to turn on. They no longer stagger, which kind of stinks, but the lights turn on, and I think that that's pretty cool. Down here we have the main switch. This is, again, I think a 25-amp micro switch. It's super sweet. It handles the LiPo power very well and powers these Aussie motors to make this a just heck of a primary. Uh, this is, I think... Uh, polysilicane. I'm trying a new compound. Normally I use epoxy putty for this, but I wanted something that would set fast. And I think this compound is called polysilicane, and it's um, it's got a kind of gooey, it's still a, a two-part compound. You could see that in the twisty bit when I was time-lapsing through installing it. But um, it's got like a two and a half minute set time, which is excellent for this purpose. Then I even put a dab up here so that this will continue to run smooth. So I'm pretty happy with the blaster. I think that it's going to perform marvelously. Uh, these leads still obviously need an XT60 connector coming into the battery tray, and then I might even ream this out a little bit so that you can fit even more power inside. But now all I got to do is close it up. So before I show the firing demo, I just want to say that the lights being on all the time on this blaster is sweet. This looks really, really cool. Very happy with how this turned out. Kind of sad that I don't have the stagger anymore, but very sweet. And it's really not missing the noise because no pew pew noise could ever be heard over. <coughs> Guys, this blaster is sweet now. I really want to make one of these for myself. It is just awesome. I really, really dig the overall ergonomics. And now <coughs> that it has the performance to match, like, Blaster is just really, really cool. Um, the only thing that has changed is in order to cinch this up completely because of gutting the port to insert the switch, I had to actually use a machine screw to get all the way in there and really uh, cinch it up. But very happy with that. Very happy with the blaster overall. Love that the LEDs are still in here. I just think that it's a really sweet blaster. But a blaster like this uh, being $80 MSRP is actually a little above my pay grade. So this one doesn't even belong to me. It belongs to Chris of the SCNC, and he's actually in town working right now. And so I can deliver it to him in person. So as much as I could 
talk about how sweet and how much fun this blaster is. I really covered all of that in my review. If you have any questions about how it was made, I've made countless flywheel build videos. I highly recommend checking out either Sanguine or I think there's a pretty good explanation in uh, Apis's mod guide. As far as materials used, I will put uh, links to all of them in the description box below if you want to build something like this of your very own. But this is a sweet blaster. Let's go see what Chris thinks of it. I never get to de deliver commissions on video. This is going to be fun. Ah. So this beautiful, beautiful is for you. Thank you. It's actually got a lipo in it. I don't think you're going to be able to fly with the lipo, but it no. is it is actual ready to go. Beautiful thing. Want to take it out back? Sure, yeah, wherever you want to take it.